Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So uh, first thing I would like to do is like to share something that just happened fairly recently. And uh, in fact, just a few days ago that uh, I thought was apropos of a lot of the stuff we're talking about here. And so uh, we were uh, last Thursday, we were going to the Met to see a, uh, an exhibit there and uh, came up the Lexington Avenue subway golf at 86th Street. And we're gonna take the Crosstown bus cause we're nice and hot day. So take that over to Fifth Avenue. And so we got off the subway and we're, we're looking around the sign seeing where the, uh, where the bus stop was. And, and Maria was looking up and didn't notice that there was a, a slight raised uh, uh, divider on the, on the street. It was painted yellow to match the yellow lines. So it kind of blended in but it was right near the crosswalk. And so as she's looking up there, she tripped over this divider. It was going about maybe three inches or something like that. Tripped over that and started to go down. But as she's going down, she immediately went into this gorgeous tuck and roll. That was just like kind of blah, blah, blah. And she, she rolled and, and zero uh, injury from that, you know, and falls you know, are particularly amongst our demographic, we're in our 70s, falls are a, um, a major issue for a lot of people. But here she was, it's not like something we practice, we don't practice somersaults, we don't practice that, it's that, but it was in that super conscious state, she was able to immediately make adjustments faster than you can think to shape her body in such a way as to have zero uh, injury from, from a, could be, it could have been a rather ugly fall. So um, uh, I take that as a, an indication of the stuff that we're doing is, very broad implications that we don't even know because we don't actually get to test it to uh, to see what you know what the uh, what the limits of our our powers are but something like that pops up and it's like oh and it's it if i didn't bring it up it, it, it would be forgotten but it stuck in my mind because it was something that uh, was an ability that very few of us septuagenarians have. And she just demonstrated it effortlessly. It was like an immediate kind of thing. It was, you know, if you were to ask her to execute something like that consciously, maybe not so much, maybe she would, would uh, prefer not to, but the, uh, in that moment, there was no, there was a, uh, there's no choice. She had to reach deep into her bag of tricks in a nanosecond and boom. So anyways, this is something that I use as an encouragement for all the stuff we're doing because it, we don't know what the challenges will be that life will present us, but there will be, be fun stuff there to, uh, to explore. So uh, moving on, uh, I would like to go deeper into the alchemy of the grass dragon meditation that we have played with over the last few weeks. And I'd like to take it deeper. And there's, um, it's, a, it's an exercise that I would say most people that, you know, if they, you know, if they watch the video, they say, oh, that's, that's nice. Maybe, maybe some of you did it. Maybe some of you just looked at it and said, oh, that's kind of cool. But the, uh, and even if you did do it, maybe you don't do it. Maybe you never did it again. There is a benefit from actually doing it. There's a benefit from, from doing it often. And, you know, I talked before about how it opens the central channel, the Renma, the Duma, the, 
the primary channels that are the reservoir of chi in, in the body. And, and it has that way of it, the, that chi that also nourishes your brain. And so there's all kinds of, it, it allows all the meridians to, to be regulated. So there's all kinds of really cool stuff from that. And even if you do it at a mechanical level, which I'd say most people are going to, if, if at all, um, it's going to give you benefits. If, however, you go deeper, if you get into the alchemy of the grass dragon, something really cool happens. So the grass dragon is it's one of the, the three Bagua dragons, and it's the... Um, it's the one that is, you know, the grass is, it's it kind of, it, it indicates a, a very low um, kind of crocodile kind of, kind of, kind of energy. And um, the grass itself is wood energy. So it's that upward thrust. Grass is very resolute. If you don't mow your lawn, it's probably going to grow. It's probably going to get very tall, and uh, so the you know, it has that upward thrust, that uh, that wood energy. But grass, the grass dragon also is watery. It's it's, and the water feeds the wood energy. So it's a watery energy, and it also uh, is earthy. So we get these three elements, these three together, which by creating this triad, uh, it creates a, um, an energy that Master Yang would call mysterious. It's, it's something which it kind of goes beyond what we can kind of consciously wrap our minds up. We can only think of it metaphorically. You know, it's like, okay, the water and the water feeds the, the uh, wood and the earth is, uh, acts as, a, um, uh, as an integrator for them. And we can think of it in those terms. But also is a, a perfect Qigong for summertime because we're getting the intense fire chi of the summer. Particularly in these hot days where it's 90, 100 degrees, you can get you can get very, very fiery. And so having that other energy there acts to temper that that fire chi, that the maybe excessive fire chi that you may encounter in the summertime. The um, so elementally. It's, it's doing this thing. So we're, we're encountering these elements that are nourishing our, uh, our body mind. But also it's, we're doing something here by reaching and feeling with those fingers. The fingers are reaching out as if to grasp something. You're kind of reaching out and kind of pulling with those fingernails, which is again, wood, right? So again, that ember, it is, the, finger, the fingers have a whole bunch of meridians there, six of them on each side. And whenever we are reaching out with those fingers as if to grasp, we are connecting up those meridians which are nourishing our organs. So it is taking us in the direction of health and longevity and, and heightened um, ability. Now, one of the things we're going to be doing today is we're going to be reaching out like this. And at the same time, the head is going to go the opposite direction. So it's going to be like a, mm, you're looking like this. And that lengthening there, that opening up of the neck, it it allows for the energy of the meridians to express itself, to nourish your body mind. One of the meridians in particular is the uh, 
San Jao Meridian, the triple warmer, which goes up the arm, up over the shoulder, up the neck, and then into the ear. And then, but wait, there's more. It goes to the ear and then it goes up around the ear and over to the eye. And so by opening this San Jao, you are creating better eyesight and better hearing. You are, a lot of us encounter problems, particularly as we get older, as our chi gets less and less, because there's a, a, natu a natural curve to the chi, as we get less and less, and the, we, we tend to reach less, and consequently there's less connection there, and then the eyesight starts to fade, the ears start to, the hearing starts to go, things like that start to start to happen. We start to, to lose a lot of the abilities we had, we took for granted when we were younger. So, but we, by opening these meridians and kind of stressing the system so that we are, we're kind of stretching the rubber band, we are enhancing our chi. So all this stuff is, is kind of background for, you know, the, the exercise that we're going to be doing, but it's important to understand the alchemy that's occurring here. It's not just, okay, we're just doing this kind of thing with our arms. It's like, no, no, we are, by activating these meridians, we are enhancing our health. We are slowing down the entropy that kind of we, all things are affected by. All things tend to fall apart as they, as they age. And that's just the way of the world. But what we can do is we can pump the brakes a little bit and slow down that entropy and sometimes even reverse it. Sometimes have neg entropy. That is, you can enhance your vitality as you get older. And a lot of you who are watching this know what I'm talking about. You, you are more vital today than you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There's more, more chi there. And we can take that even deeper, even we can amplify that even more with the, an, an exercise like this one. So another aspect of this that is really important is you got to lose some of that kind of shyness about getting into it. So when you're becoming a dragon, it's not like you're not like a, a, a pussycat here. You're, uh, you're reaching out and there's a there's there's an intensity to the action. There's a, you are becoming the dragon. You're not trying to look like a dragon. You are being a dragon. And so that, that's part of it too. So when you're, when you're getting this, there is a quality of vitality, of intensity there that is, that is associated with the wood element, the grass part there of it. The grass is the wood element has it it's related to your liver function, which you know Master Young called that like a, a, a happy anger. So there's a kind of a kind of a feeling there. And what that does is it it feeds the heart, that 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 liver function. So when we get that 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 vitality going there, we are ah, oh, there's there is a uh, it enhances our, our, our heart's capacity for what? For joy. Because that is the emotion that is, that is, accompanies the heart. So if we feed the heart, there's the, more of a capacity for joy. And what's, the, what's feeding the, the wood? The water. So it's like, oh, you know, that, 
that kind of feeling there. So we're having a both and kind of thing. We're having this intense yang expression, but we're also having hmm, a very deep, profound yin experience as well. And so our ability to shift between those is a key part of this whole, whole operation. So uh, I invite you, particularly those of you who are doing this in the privacy of your own homes and nobody watching you, you really get into being the dragon. You know, something, lose your self-consciousness and, and really just, just kind of just dance like nobody's watching. And, uh, and then you're gonna start to activate the, the necessary uh, impetus to make the alchemy happen. So you're not creating a distance. It's not, you're not like watching yourself doing this. It's like, no, you, you are into it. You're really feeling it. So we're gonna, we're gonna start very slowly, very deliberately and explore the component parts of this and then we'll put them together and do our little dance, our little dragon dance, our grass dragon dance. Okay, so why don't you uh, stand up, please? Now let's get it started with our three pillars. Feel the balls of the feet. Get that. Feel your knees are unlocked and you're feeling your center of mass over the balls of the feet. And reach up with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. So an important part of this is the tail, the dragon's tail. So you're gonna feel that, you're gonna feel that tail. So let's start now by, by feeling into our tail as we, as we get into our central equilibrium. We're gonna be moving it around. So it's, we're not gonna stay in this place, but this is our, 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 our starting point, we're checking in. And then push away from the ground and then spiral down, and turn. So we're releasing the quad, getting very relaxed there. Reach out with the elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. Point with the index finger. Both sides, feel that energetic coherence, and then spread your fingers and feel your fingernails. The arms, the hands are, are, you can think if you put your hand on your head, that will give you the shape that you want there, uh, that you want. You want to have a hollow there at the Lao Gong point in the palm of your hand. You're reaching with those fingers, and this is activating the meridians in your fingers. There are also meridians in your toes that have their, their, their uh, terminals in the toes. We're not gonna talk about those today. We're just gonna be focusing on the, uh, the ones in your fingers. So we have uh, so we have our three pillars. We have our central equilibrium, our energetic coherence, and the uh, we've unkinked the hose by opening the jade pillow gate, opening the shoulders, releasing the qua. So we're un we've unkinked the hose and allowed the chi to flow. So you want to feel the whole body integrated. We're not moving yet, but you want to feel that integration as we get started. 
And one of the things about the uh, the chi, and you'll probably notice it in this, I'm trying gonna try to take a, a nice easy gradient that is that when we bring our arms up and reach them out, you may get fatigued. And this is natural. This is something that comes with the fact that our meridians might have, have not been uh, uh, utilized to the degree that they, they could have. And particularly as we get older, and so there's a tendency to get feel weaker in that. But the, the, the plus side is that the more you do this, the stronger you get. The more chi you get in your arms, and the you're going to be able to do exercises like this a little more with uh, a little longer and a little more robustly. But let's take it. Let's uh, so we're gonna gonna feel the uh, uh, the uh, balls of the feet and reach with your wrists. And reach out with your fingers. Open up between your shoulder blades and sink into your heels, but maintain your central equilibrium. So you want to feel that space between your shoulder blades. You want to feel that reaching with your elbows. And the key here too is you don't want your elbows to go too wide. You want to keep it fairly narrow. So they're reaching forward. So your elbows are pretty much coming out, you know, in front of your shoulders. So now I just want you to feel into your tail where your coccyx is, your tailbone, and very, just very gently, just kind of wag your tail almost invisibly, but just, just want to feel that what that feels like to wag your tail. So what we're doing here, when we do that is we're, we're connecting up the governing vessel with the conception vessel and filling up the, those two channels. So you just wanna get that sense of that. You wanna have a connection with, between your shoulder blades, at the top of your shoulder blades and also at the, uh, uh, just beside your sacrum, just above the, uh, above the coccyx. So you're getting that. So now, so then bring your arms down and just notice what that little bit created in terms of chi. Feel the chi in your hands just from that little bit of of, of activity. Sink into your heels and just kind of get into the yin part there for a moment. Now we're going to get yang again. Go to the balls of your feet and arms come up. Reach out. Open between your shoulder blades, feel your fingernails, feel your fingers, feel those, your extending, reaching. And this time you're gonna move slightly to your left and then into your right. So you get about maybe 70% of your weight in your right leg. Now sink and go into your left leg and just feel that Feel that back and forth there. You wanna wag your tail as you do this. You're feeling your tail as you, as you move to the right, to the left, back to center. Sink into your left and then to the right. So you go left to go right, go left and back to center. Now you're going to go left, go right, and this time you're going to circle with your, with your right hip and then come down 
and circle with your left hip. And circle back and pause. Feel the chi in your arms as those meridians are really getting, getting a workout. Cir circle with your right hip. Circle with your left hip. You're wagging your tail. So 50% of all the actions have to do with the tail. So just wag the tail, circle with the hip, wag the tail, circle with the left hip, back to center. And then bring your hands down. And feel the activity in your arms. You're going to feel a whole lot of, uh, of circul blood circulation as well. You're going to get a lot of microcirculation where the blood is going to cells that are often under serviced by your circulatory system which can cause for health problems as well. We're also oxygenating the blood by doing this. So the, the blood that is being circulated is very, is at near capacity in terms of its ability to hold oxygen. And that has a tendency to counteract a lot of the pernicious influences in the body. And now you go into the balls of your feet, wrists, reach of the fingers open. And now we're going to wag the tail. So you sink into your left and then wag the tail, the right hip, you're reaching, you're wagging the tail to the right. You're reaching out with your right hand. So you're feeling from the, the spine to the scapula, to the shoulder, to the elbow, to the wrist, to the fingers. And notice what else is happening here. I'm, I'm reaching with my head to the left as I reach out with my right arm. and then come down, circle down, feel that tail. Now wag the tail to the left as you reach out with your left hand. So feel the spine, scapula, shoulder, elbow, wrists, fingers. So we're feeling that connection from the fingers all the way through the, the foot, all the way through the toes into the earth, and the head is opening. So we're creating this, this uh, uh, lengthening there of the meridians as we do that. And then we wag the tail back to center and ah. And then circle, wag the tail to the right. Right hand reaches forward. Head goes to the left. You're intently reaching out. You're a dragon, remember? If you're reaching out, you're going to grab something. And then wag the tail back to the left, back to the center. Wag the tail to the left. Reach your head to the left, to the right as you reach out with your left arm. Reaching. Spine to scapula to shoulder to elbow to wrist to fingers and then back to center. One more. So we circle right hand, head to the left. We feel those connections all the way through. Opening. And wag your tail back to center, to the left, 
Head goes to the right, reach out, open, and back to center. Now we're going to, left hand's going to go under, it's going to reach out to so your head's going to go, go to the right as your left hand reaches out, your right hand comes back, you're wagging your tail, and then back to center. Reaching under with your right hand, the head goes to the left. Reach out, wag the tail, and back to center. Left hand. Wag the tail. One more left. Right. Back to center. Come down. Feel the chi. Feel the whole body filling up. Feel that connection, the whole body energetic connection. yourself in your heels, but feel that center of equilibrium as you do that. You want to get very yin right now. Allow that energy to circulate on its own. Okay, now Balls of your feet, wrists, fingers open, fingernails open. We've been doing it very narrow with you. Now we're going to get wider. Your left and then the right. Your head goes to the left, your right hand goes out. Back, wag your tail. Now reach out with your left hand, it goes out wide. And sink into your right leg and step with your left foot. You're reaching out. Sink into your left leg, you reach out. Head goes to the left, right hand reaches out wide, grasping. Left hand comes up. And then sink into your right leg as you circle around. So we're wide circle, come back into your left. And then a smaller circle. As if you are the dragon, you're playing with a, a ball floating in the water. It's, you're pushing down on that ball. Step forward on the toe of your right foot, reach out. And then sink. 
and hands come down. Okay, sink into your heels, feel the yin. Allow that energy to gather, allow that to circulate, allow that to fill up all the nooks and crannies that might get underutilized, underserviced by your energy on a normal basis. Feel it goes where it needs to go. It awakens parts of you that are dormant that are waiting to come out and express their full potential. Okay, last one. So this is, balls of your feet, wrists, Fingers open between your shoulder blades, reaching out. Head goes to the left, your tail wags, reaches out, right hand reaches out. Left hand reaches out, step with your left foot. Right hand reaches. Left hand raises. Right, the whole body turns your Wide circle and then mm, pressing down on that ball. Mm, sink. Reaching up with that left hand as you're pressing down with your right. Turn circle to the right and then step up. Come in on the right toe. Reaching out. Now, circle with your left hand. Circle with your right. Step forward with your right foot. Reach. Left hand up, down. So your right hand is coming up. Your left hand pressing down, palm down. And you sink into your left leg, big circle. Right leg, small circle, press down on that ball, reach, sink. Feel that energetic connection. Circle and then step in on the toe of your left foot, reach. And then ah, sink into your heels. Feel that connection, that energetic connection. Circle with the right hand. Head goes to the left. Circle to the left hand. Head goes to the right. Heels and sink. Hands come down.
Now we're gonna get very yin, weights in the heels. Open the chest, open the shoulders, open the throat. And rotate your palms. And now we eat. We invite the chi to come in and do whatever it needs to do to take us to the next level of where we want to be. Just feel that, allow the energy to, to circulate and do whatever it needs to do. We're eating the chi. Ah, rotate your hands. Step in. Take a deep breath. And sink. Press down. Dissolve into the emptiness. Sink into your heels. Relax. Here we're going beyond yin and yang into the wu chi. The undifferentiated nothingness. Moving toward the state of non-being. Letting go of attachment to stuff. Creating space in our being. Please take a seat. Oh, I love that. Ah, uh, good. Well, you said take a seat, and you made it sound like it would be easy. <laughs> uh, we're stressing the system there. <laughs> I, I don't know about stressing it, but you're. But it's a good filling. stress. It's a good you're, stress. You're filling it. You're filling it. At least I'm filling it. I didn't. I. I felt a lot of energy, but not necessarily. I wouldn't have used the word stress. To describe it though it's just like yeah <laughs> i know how atlas feels <laughs> oh you're on mute scott oh I, valerie asked where jonathan was i was just saying he got dumped again i guess he, he fell off again. He, he might be he's, back. He's in the twilight zone. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, that was um, for me. It was really, really, really earthy. It was just very. I mean, it wasn't like I, you know. I didn't. I just felt like a. Rock, I don't know, and, you know, just just very, you know, it wasn't like the energy was excited as so much as just dense and, and really strong. And I just, you know, I just let my, embodied my inner dragon and it was, uh, that really helped with what I asked you before about the movements because, you know, okay. connecting, up, connecting up all those points and everything really really made for a whole body, whole body rock energy. <laughs> Good. Good. Rock on, rock <laughs> on. <laughs> and I really, and the, um, <clears throat> I really 
realize that the the claw you can really get a grip on the energy you can get a grip on the air you can get a grip on the chi and it, yeah. really, it really bites mm -hmm. really bites. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. good good now that we've um changed uh lots of lots of joy in the heart i didn't necessarily get that while we were doing the um, meditation but once i sat down it was just like whoa <laughs> nice here we go and like i said it, it paled all the fireworks last week this is fireworks this is fireworks. <laughs> yeah yeah that that it feeds the the heart that joy cub oh you know, and uh, it, but the joy results from that intense yes. activity, right? That yes. we're, we're really in the in in the present to that in body, mind, spirit to that intense degree, and so then ah, oh, whenever you have a, you pause and just allow it to allow it to be, the heart just goes ah, oh, it 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 sings. Embracing the universe. Mm -hmm. well, How was that for you, Jonathan? Well, you can see my tail, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice tail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's a very alchemical thing, I think, when you start really feeling you have a tail, and the relation it gives you to your body. Because if you feel your body as whole from just starting from the inside, you got to gather everything together in parts but as soon as you put a tail on it like gives a perspective of the whole body almost instantly it's like the way it the way you see your body with the tail changes like instantly you know in a sense and if and so i think there's really something something with that mm. i mean lots of animals have tails we don't but uh we become more like an animal i guess when we have one it, it yeah, certainly makes, makes that connection, that physical connection that kind of grounds a lot of that mental activity, yeah. which yes. consumes our lives. We get yes. so caught up in our in our heads and and to right. we feel our tail is like, oh, you know, <laughs> we're we're back to <laughs> to right. to where we came from. Going back. And home. I had a tail, people. I, I was removed by a uh, coop, actually. Wasn't the Surgeon General at the time, but uh, I. I had a tail. I, I mm -hmm. wish I could have it back. <laughs> and in a little bit of foreskin. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it it just the tail, just the tail thing, really just brings out your inner dragon. And yeah, it feels really good to be a dragon. And the yeah. fact that it's it's half of what's going on. It's not like oh yeah, and you wag your tail. It's like, no, no, right. you wag your tail and you do this other stuff too. Mm. It's like, yeah, you know, we're really emphasizing this. So whenever we're doing that, we're, we're moving the yao, we're moving the qua, we're, you know, we're, everything is, is happening mm. down there where, where the emphasis is in, in Tai Chi. It's like in, in that uh, turning from the waist, in the dantian, is that's, you know, it's right opposite the tail is the, is the dantian. So getting where the action is down there, which, which takes us out of our obsessive thought patterns and puts us back into our physicality. You had something more there, Valerie? Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> um, okay, the tail didn't want to stop moving. Once, once it got permission to be in there, it was just like, yeah, okay, let's play, let's play, let's play. <laughs> and very interesting, um, as I talked to you about, I do have dry eye, right? And I do several things to be working on that, and it's getting better. But not only did I have that joy, but I realized how, how much fluid I have in my eyes right now. I mean, I really got into that, you know, with the head and the reaching. And I, I, this is no joke. 
I'm really, really surprised and delighted that 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 opened up. I mean, that's that's icing on the cake. Well, cool. Very cool. I have a similar condition. I, I, I've, I've had dry eyes most of my life and and right now they're moist. You know, <laughs> from from all that water, you know, gee, they were, we're sloshing around there. And it's like, wow, you know, it, it really is, uh, you know, uh, uh, my eyes are moist right now, which is very rare for them. How, how do I explain this to my ophthalmologist? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do this, I'm guaranteeing you, the patients are going to see a difference. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm, Brit, I'm, Brit says her eyes are moist too, and she she yeah. was she wasn't even doing it actively, but was just kind of with us. So it's like there's a uh, there's something going to a lot of a lot of that water chi going around right now. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, uh, I encourage people to explore this. You know, it's uh, we we covered a lot there, but. Yeah, uh -huh. get <laughs> get your dragon out. It's uh, it, yeah, exactly that. Just that, just that reaching. How many of us are like you know? Yeah, we kind of have these you know limitations on our reach. We reach but pull back at the same time. But to dragons don't have that problem. Dragons mm. like oh, no, <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and we want that. We want ah. Uh, Get that open because then it allows you to, to experience these hidden potentials that are buried, you know, in all these habitual patterns that have we've been socialized into. It's like, yeah, no, get the dragon out, you know. And uh, you know. <laughs> yes. So great. Thank you. Oh, Jonathan, you have something? I just say it, it just add it does with the head it really does reinforce a full body integration because mm. otherwise with the head we put it you know we tuck our chin and whatever and then we do stuff with our body but by doing that twist with the head with the arm you're pulling the whole body together in a that's right pretty whole way holistic way and so we get the head and the tail working yeah at, yeah. at, at opposite poles there yeah right it's like <laughs> it, it uh it, it integrates the whole system. So I You're encourage you to explore this more, really get into it, do it, do it often, do something, you know, a few minutes every day just to get, get the, get your dragon integrated, bring him, bring him into the, into the, the fold there, into the congregation and, uh, you know, and give, give a place at the table. And uh, who knows what, who knows what possibilities lie there. I'm not, uh... I'm not going to grab anything anymore. From now on, I'm going to claw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, kids. The door. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Yes, thanks, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Love you too. <laughs>